Good evening and welcome to the Municipality of Monroeville's Citizens Night for May 9th, 2019. It is 7.09 p.m. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All of council is in attendance, excluding Mr. Duncan, who could not be here this evening. We're going to open up our meeting with our Citizens' Night portion of the meeting. Uh, if you would like to address council, now would be your time to do it. There is a sign-up sheet, so if anyone that has signed up already, they could uh, approach uh, council. We kindly always ask for a five-minute uh, time limit on your comments. This is not to censor anybody, but this is just to right. keep the meeting moving at an efficient pace. Certainly, if you have um, mm -hmm. more questions, comments afterwards, you could please uh, contact me, the manager, or your council person. So if you could, you signed in already? Yes, I did. Great, Pam. If you could just state your name for the record. and Pamela Bodziak, Assistant Director at Monroeville Public Library. Uh, we're passing out two handouts tonight. One is our... Um, monthly report which has statistics but also has photos and stories from the floor definitely worth a look we also have our new newsletter which is amusingly named check it out <laughs> it has our upcoming events um, there's also a note from the director and a couple of fun extras so be sure to check it out summer reading kicks off Monday June 3rd summer reading is for everyone we have programs and prizes for all ages the theme this year is a universe of stories, and many of our programs are going to be in honor of the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing. Uh, we have weekly NASA at my library programs coming up, which are being offered in part courtesy of a joint grant from the American Library Association and NASA. We'll also be holding a moon landing celebration bash on July 20th, which is the official 50th anniversary date, so be sure not to miss that. It should be a lot of fun. Over in our Maker Lab, we're very excited. Our new laser cutter is now available for use. Uh, that etches and carves designs into wood panels. You can use them to make signs, plaques, jewelries, just about anything you can think of. It does use a laser to cut. So there is a class that we ask you to take so you can be unofficially, officially certified in the use of it. <laughs> and then you can come down during our open hours to be able to use it to make anything that you can think of. Uh, few upcoming programs on Friday, May 17th at 2.30, Counselor Eileen Koliani will be returning to the library to discuss healing the pain of the past. She'll explore strategies for healing from childhood injuries and trauma. Uh, her programs are very popular, so we're looking forward to having her back. Wednesday, May 29th at 7 o'clock, you can join us for a taste of Mediterranean cuisine. Uh, Cindy Javor, a registered dietitian, will be sharing some tips and strategies on how to apply <coughs> the principles of Mediterranean cooking to your life and to your schedule. I am hoping there will be free samples, but I cannot guarantee that, so um, don't quote me. Our new pop culture uh, Club for Adults Fan Addicts had a very spirited discussion on the good and the bad about the new Avengers film that came out this past month. If you are a Game of Thrones fan, we will be discussing the finale on Monday, June 3rd at 7. So if you're looking for a place to share your excitement or your disappointment, please join us. And finally, um, the Monroeville Library and the Monroeville Chamber of Commerce are hard at work planning our third annual Fun Fest for Saturday, August 24th. We are currently looking for judges for our cupcake decorating contest. Ooh. So if you would like to volunteer, you do have to eat cupcakes. I will I make that job. clear. Um, but if you would like to volunteer, you can contact myself Clearly or Nicole Henline, and we will get you signed up. That's a good job. I've had that one. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very, yeah, it's a very good position if you can get it. Thank you very much. Thank I a, you. I have a quick question. Sure, for you. sure, sure, sure. The elevator project, is it? I could tell by that smell. <laughs> It is, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, the part, I believe, has come in that they have been waiting for, and we have had workers there this week. They had it open yesterday. It was very exciting. <laughs> it's not operational, but it is, there is forward motion being made. Okay. So I'm yeah. very happy to report just that. For, just for everybody else's edification, too, Pam, we kind of 
brief them a little bit what happened? It was just kind of an accident. It was ready to go and proceed. Yes, and then it was ready to go. I believe we were just waiting for it to be inspected. Uh, and then we had one of those torrential downpours, one of, sort of one of the, the uh, flash storms. Um, the, the overhang had was just kind of temporary because of what the final finishing touches were. And so there was leakage that came in into the elevator, into the circuitry of the box. Not, not, not we were all very sad. It was so, it was so close <laughs> to being ready to just be ready to go. The um, contractor's going to take care of that? Yes. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like the Kentucky Derby with maximum security. Very much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was. Yeah. We're close. We're, and we're almost there now, so. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Pam. Thanks, Thank Pam. you. Thank you very much. If anyone else has signed in, now would be your time to address council. If anyone would like to address council, now would be your time. You just sign in, state your name for the record, and that you are a Monroeville resident. Uh, my name is Brian Zeke. Uh, I'm a resident of Asbury Court, uh, right, and, and I just wanted to uh, first thank Council for, I, I see a lot happening on the road closure, and I just was curious if I could get an update as to where we're at, where we're sure. going. And Mr. Hugus, do we have an update? We do. Could you Weather. provide it, please? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Weather pending, the road will be completed tomorrow with the exception of the paving. Um, the paving will be done under our paving contract, which is on your agenda tonight. So with that being said, hopefully by the end of May, it'll be open. Is there any concern, with, is there any concern about um, the slide going down to Route 22 and PennDOT? Not at this point, no. Fantastic. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. If anyone else would like to address council on any municipal item, now would be your time. All that being weather pending. You know. Yes, we're stressing that part. Yeah, us. weather pending. Yeah, the front moving in now. So. Can I, I'm sorry, can I just get If you would just want to, you have, yep. in, if you have questions. If you could just sign in, state your name for the record, please, and that okay. you are a Monroeville resident. Yes. Okay, Lynn Coker Zeke. Um, also resident of Asbury Court, maybe to that guy. Um, I just wanted to clarify, you said you said regarding the um, paving contract, so you're going to discuss the bid tonight. I'm just trying to understand. Yes, uh, we put our paving program out to a public bid every year. That is on the agenda tonight to, uh, well, uh, to consider Tuesday. the award will be on Tuesday night. Then we have to get contracts in place. Um, but I could see that being done by the end of May. Okay, so no concern about the approval, et cetera. That's no. What I Okay, very good. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Once again, if there's anyone that would like to address council on any municipal item, now would be your time to do it. Seeing no one to close that part of the meeting, and we're going to move over to our agenda setting meeting for May 9th. And uh, we'll be doing a, I have an executive session announcement. The council conducted an executive session for personnel and litigation reasons prior to tonight's Citizens Night Beginning at 6.30 p.m. until 7 p.m., council legislative action, if any, shall be taken at the May 14th council meeting. Council, we're going to discuss the approval of the minutes. The minutes you have for this month are the Citizens' Night meeting of April 2nd, 2019, the council work session of April 2nd, 2019, and the regular council meeting of April 9th, 2019. Council, any questions or additions or comments on those minutes? No, sir. None. 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 We're going to move over to our tax collections, the reports thereof. Any questions or comments, Council? No, sir. Very good. List of bills and budget transfers. Mrs. Gatiss, do you have any questions this evening on these? I do. I had a few, and Mr. Little answered them for me, so I'm all good. Very good. Mr. Poach? No, sir. Mr. Harvey? <clears throat> they were answered. Excellent. Mr. Johnson. Nothing, sir. Mr. Arsenko. None. Mr. Wilson. No, thank you. Very good. And the payroll <coughs> report, Council, any questions or comments? Yes, sir. No. Nope. Very good. And as we were just speaking a moment ago, our bids and proposals, we have uh, three this evening that we're going to talk about, but we'll be taking action on Tuesday on these items. Uh, Mr. Little, if you could discuss the bids and proposals, please. Yeah, Mr. Hugus and I, we opened uh, bids on uh, Tuesday morning and... 
I believe we got some uh, very good bids and very close bids. Uh, the first one in, in front of you, Council, is for the paving and the low bid, uh, and we believe responsible bidder is Tresco Paving uh, for $1,019,215.75, and I would recommend Council award uh, that contract on Tuesday evening. Uh, the second one is for the uh, silk coat and crack silk program. We had a loan bid from Russell Standard for $198,410.47. Uh, as Council most likely knows, under procurement laws, if, if because it's a loan bid, they can rebid it if they wish. Uh, I would recommend to award the bid. Russell Standard is a uh, reputable company, and the uh, price seems to be reasonable. Uh, the last one is for the fog seal program. We received two, Holbein Incorporated and Russell Standard, and the low bid was Holbein at $153,687.41, and I would recommend the council to approve that one also. Have Both we points. used them before? That name doesn't ring a bell with Russell me. They were used last year as a sub with Russell Standard. So why aren't we going to just use Russell Standard across the board on that? We chose to separate the bids out into three individual bid packages to get better pricing. Okay. Because Holbein was actually a sub to Russell Standard. So we figured if you just separated it out, it might be easier for us to manage the system. Okay. I mean, uh, it's, only, it's only $500 difference between right. the two bids. but Correct. So I didn't know why we didn't just go with one. Okay. Uh, the only thing I would mention to you is the Tresco cost does not include Cabot Road because that occurred after we put out the bid package. So we'll just do a change order okay. with, with Tresco to accomplish that paving. Okay. And it'll be the first thing on the agenda. Very good. Mr. John, you had a question? Yeah, I just had a question with, with the uh, Russell Standard on the second bid on the silk, fog silk program. Why wouldn't you give some thought? or at least talk to them to have the same company do both of them projects instead of bouncing it. It's not that big of a money difference. Well, I don't think or you, send, something or? you don't have any justification to disqualify them as the lowest bidder. We have to take the lowest responsible bidder. Oh, you do. And he also said case. they actually wor worked. That's what I just asked. He actually that's said right, they worked. Right. They worked under, at, under Russell Standard last year. Oh, okay. That because that company. So. They so. performed the same product under Russell Standard's name last year. Oh, I apologize. I that's just why we that's, okay. that's why we segregated <laughs> it out. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't no. talk. I guess. No. Well, no. Just so everyone understands. Any other questions on those items, Council? No. Very no. sure. no. good. Thank you. Moving over to our new business. Our first one is 19-1-C Recovery <laughs> Centers of America. Mr. Little, please. Yes, this is an applicant is requesting a conditional use approval to operate an inpatient residential drug and alcohol rehabilitation and counseling facility pursuant to Monroeville Zoning Ordinance Number 1443 as amended, Section 401.17. Property is located at 2380 McGinley Road in the L Special Use Zoning District. This is a public hearing. <clears throat> This being a public hearing item, so we have some representatives here for the project. We do. If you would like to state your name for the record. My name is Jack Finnegan. I represent the applicant. Welcome, Mr. Finnegan. Did you uh, sign in already? I didn't. Okay, if, you, if you could. I will. That would be great. Is there anyone else that's representing this project here? Yes, there are several Thanks people, much. and we'll most likely call a couple of them. Yeah, what's, uh, everyone representing the project, come forward <laughs> if you don't mind. Okay. If you're representing the project. And then anyone else that this is a public hearing item that feels that they may or may not be speaking about this item, please rise as well because I'm going to we'll swear you all in. So anyone else that, would, that thinks they're maybe going to comment, now would be your time to stand up as well. I know everybody's, we got a nice line there with the sign-in <laughs> sheet. <clears throat> and if everyone could raise their right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the. I'm sorry, Mr. Finnegan. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I've got to keep it official. I want to make sure the project goes through. 
You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Thank you very much. I, Mr. Finnegan, the floor I, I is yours. I didn't know you swore in lawyers, too. <laughs> it's public hearing, right? We well, especially lawyers, especially Mr. Lawyers. Finnegan. Oh, especially oh, Jeff Finnegan. Finnegan. Oh, yeah. That's the only reason why we did it. <laughs> okay, I do swear to I tell do. the truth. I know you okay. do, always. Um, <laughs> I'm here to basically. This is you'll like this evening because the lawyer will speak less than everybody else in the room. So that's probably a plus. Okay. Perfect. So this is an application for the uh, relative to the old Health South building on McKinley Drive, McKinley Road. Um, it's for a drug and alcohol rehab center. That building or that land is about 9.14 acres. The building is a huge building, 78,000 plus square feet. Uh, you may recall that it was a rehab center before, but this is a drug and alcohol rehab center. In the application from 1 to 13 on page 2 is itemized all the various and sundry services you, you offer for that. Uh, we have people here that will explain that in detail, the, the chief science officer, and we have people that will explain why it complies with all the conditional use. Notwithstanding, we do have a letter from the municipality saying it is a conditional use and does comply with all the conditional use requirements, which we would like to make part of the record if it isn't already. So uh, <clears throat> with that, if there's any zoning questions, keeping in mind that we don't have site plans or you know, stormwater management because that's already out there and it complies and so forth. So we don't have a lot of presentation certainly with regard to that, but however, we would like to explain to you what this center does, what it will do, and hopefully a big benefit to Monroeville. So with that, if you have any questions of me, is there any legal questions that anybody has, I'll do my best to answer them and tell the truth while I do it. And uh, 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 I understand that the, you're not changing the footprint of the building. Everything not. will be done in, t in <clears throat> the interior, so there's no need for any of the exterior work to be done. No, there will be no um, increase in the footprint. The parking lot will remain the same and so forth. So right. there's no, no reason for the site plans and so forth. It's already here. So once upon approval, how long do you think it would be before you'd be opened? Um, I can't answer that, but who uh, can? It, it would depend on the construction. Come on, come on up. It would depend on the uh, renovation. You have to stay in Sorry, yeah. <laughs> sorry, Steve Crosley, uh, uh, with Recovery Centers of America. It would depend on the <coughs> renovation period. Um, okay. We don't have a defined period yet. We it would anticipate somewhere, you know, I'll give a wide range, so six to fifteen months, somewhere okay. in that range. Um, but it all depends on the renovation period. Okay. okay. Council, any other questions? Yes, I do. Um, Jack, is this uh, c connected with any of the court systems that we, uh, in other words, get referrals from the court for drug alcohol or Not that uh, you're asking the source of patients? Uh, uh, basically, yes. Uh, once again, for to, who can answer that? Yeah, yeah, there she is. I think we were, we were told no. Hi, I'm Dr. Denny well, from the Recovery that. Centers of America. So we will not have contracts with the criminal justice system. Right. People will not be adjudicated there. It will not be in lieu of prison or jail. It, it, will, it, will, it will be done by people that, uh, that have, like, insurance will go in there. The family members aren't allowed inside. I mean, it, I've read the whole thing from the zoning, the planning, and all that. Right. It seems like the security is very heavy. It's very tight. Um, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, so is this associated with any uh, private or It's a private organization then? Yes, it's a private yeah. organization. Okay. And, and how are you supported financially? Venture capital, and we have uh, centers up and running already. Harvey? We have investors, and then we also have um, six centers, residential, up and running, very similar to this okay, one. Okay, it's more like an equity firm then? <coughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, bless Folks, uh, well, the I was going to make a suggestion. I was going to make a suggestion. If they have, do you have a presentation you want to go through? Is that what you're planning on doing? Is um, that something I'm you want to talk about? I'm just trying to answer your question, so I'd have well, to I don't do know if you had something way. planned or anyone else from the organization no I mean I can, um, I can do it that way if you'd like but I just figure I'll answer, I'll answer whatever you want so you had a question yeah there's I, I I'm sorry I forgot my notes um, as to how many beds there are 100 to 125 and you usually carry it about a 90 plus 90 percentage so 90 to 112 patients at any given time okay yes thank you yeah. okay and you expect well you have many, will you have armed uh, guards there at, at any time do we have what armed Guard. No, we don't have armed guards there. Okay, but it's a secure system. 
It's a, it's a secure system. Patients uh, can't leave, you know, they're, they're not locked in, but they can't just get up and leave. We'll know when that happens. Um, you got to realize 82% of our patients are fully employed. They're on general insurance. They're almost all from the surrounding neighborhood where we locate our sites. So these are folks that you see all the time. These are not right, right. Um, criminals yeah. that are, you right. know, so they're not violent uh, no. at all. Okay, thank you. My only uh, question was the amount of staff that we probably expect to employ. Um, we expect to employ about 120 to, if, if we had 100 beds, it would be about 120. Mm -hmm. um, 125 beds would probably be more like 140. Terrific. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we have uh, full-time psychiatry, medicine, nurses. We're 24-7 um, staff with those folks. We do rounds on the patients every hour, and um, we do rounds on the grounds as, as well every hour. Any other questions, Council, for Mr. Brown? Um, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole I, truth? Always, <laughs> always. <laughs> He's shaking like you, Jack. Don't worry. I, I assume your client's going to be making a significant dollar investment in the facility, and I just thought that might be good information for the, the public relative. It is, and I believe it's set forth in the application, the estimate. About oh, 20 okay. million? Yeah. How's that? Um, 20 million was the 20 last million. estimate, okay. estimate Thank I saw. You. Yeah. How much? Renovations? Um, million. Acquisition, yeah. renovation, IT, operating reserves. Yeah, okay, yeah, great. And there's going to be a significant number of employees, uh, oh, yeah. 100 and over, over, over 100 and yeah. pretty good salaries, too. Yeah. How many professional employees? Um, we will have physicians, nurses, uh, uh, nurse okay. practitioners. We will have uh, therapists. Um, the, of the 100, and tw let's say we have 125 employees, about 115 of them will be clinical. Okay. So all kinds of nurses, therapists, right, right, social right. workers, whatnot. Right. Yeah. Were you about to mention an average salary? Average salary will be about $50,000, $55,000, and the um, leadership staff will be over 100. Is this considered a nonprofit organization? No, this is a for profit company. Okay. Well, I think there's a very big need for it, and I'd like to see the nursing as mixed with the psychiatry of the issue. Yes. I think that's a big portion of a rehab for yes. this issue. So, um, I welcome it coming. Yeah, welcome I and good luck. Yes. Yeah. So. I have one more. What's the uh, like closest facility you, to here that you have? The closest facility we have to here, um, probably Devon, Pennsylvania. Devon, Devon Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know, but I've heard the closest similar facility is like in Aliquippa or something like that. It's pretty far away from where we go. There aren't many of these around, really. There's certainly a need. More are needed. Yeah. Council, any other questions? No, sir. Very good. Oh, is this and a voluntary? Uh, uh, are the patients voluntary? Yes, yes thank actually. you. <laughs> the, uh, they are voluntary. Yes. Okay. They're not adjudicated here. Right, They're not right, sentenced right. here. Right, I thought you said that, but I just wanted to yeah. make sure. Thank you. Sometimes you get a husband that's mandated by his wife. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody care to respond to that? I'm sorry. I'm good. I'm sorry. Just like something you got me there. Works at yeah. my house. Uh, <laughs> that Great. Thank you so much, Mr. Feeney. Anything else you'd like to uh, say? We or do, do have an engineer here, Rich uh, Roseberry, who to answer any uh, questions you may have about the compliance with the uh, conditional use no. uh, requirements. No. There, yeah, and there was anything, Mr. No, Wheeler? Me with our engineers. Planning department, no, any no comments. There was a very I'm thorough sorry. presentation at the planning you commission meeting. Uh, no issues. <laughs> Familiar with that bill? Very good. Yeah. No, well. Nothing else. We're good. Audience. We're good. Good to go. Are there any questions from the audience? Seeing none, we will close the public hearing, and then we will consider this on our Tuesday uh, Tuesday agenda. Thank you so much. Very Thank good. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Even though you're older than me. <laughs> <laughs> Council, we're going to move over to our motions. We have one this evening. Mr. Little, please. Yeah, the first one is a motion to advertise the rescheduling of the July Citizens Night and Council Work Session from Thursday, July 4th, for obvious reasons, to Tuesday, July 2nd, 2019. Any questions, comments about it? That will be on the agenda for Tuesday. Okay, very good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Council, we have our... Uh, Three resolutions for this evening, Mr. Little. Okay, resolution. First one is a resolution adopting the dentistry for kids sewage planning module. I've uh, I've had several people ask me what's being built on there in the empty <laughs> lot, just down the road here, and that's it's a uh, kids Everybody's dentistry for awesome. kids, and a lot of people seem to be very supportive of that. Mm -hmm. This is for their planning module with the DEP. 
This is on Monroe Boulevard, right beside the uh, Allegheny Health Network uh, outpatient center. surgery center. Correct. Any uh, questions or comments, Council? <coughs> Mr. Little, number two. Okay, number two is a resolution amending the work hours for the Route 22 William Penn Highway construction. As a lot of people may know, I've been announcing, announcing this for the last two, three months. They are, uh, PennDOT is going to begin construction, and the, and the uh, paving company is Northeast Paving. They're going to begin paving, and they're going to be changing out traffic lights. They're going to be dressing up the shoulders of the roads, which is the first part they're going to be doing and they're not going to be doing any milling and paving until the latter part of the summer but as a matter of fact I think today was their starting date because the uh, the flashing signs have been indicating that on William Penn Highway um, so this is a, a resolution to permit them uh, to work uh, in the evening hours as to not impede traffic okay, any other, any questions from council I have a, just a question Mr. Jones Mr. Hugus, I think. Sir. I'm getting a lot of phone calls about this Route 22, and I'm hearing that Northern Pike Hill is going to be involved, not in what they're doing, but is going to be worked on at the same time. We have got notice from PennDOT that they are going to rehabilitate Northern Pike just north of Avers Creek. Mm -hmm. But they have not announced when they're going to do it, but they are going to do it. Okay. So they said, that, they said it would be a, a summer or fall bidding, okay. which would lead me to believe it's probably going to be a spring construction. Which would be great, because once they work on 22, Northern Pike's going to be a real cluster. They did mention in their letter, though, that they were going to try to maintain one lane of travel. I find it hard to believe so do I. it's going to be very difficult, because it's not that wide of a road exactly. to begin with. Right. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, Council? Nope. Mr. Little, item number three under resolutions. Okay, it's a resolution to amend the right to know law and provide relief from vexatious requesters. This is a resolution that has been uh, uh, promulgated, has been going around the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania by uh, several mostly boroughs about receiving burdensome uh, right to know requests uh, to the municipalities that that um, bogged down the administrative staff. We've talked about this in uh, years past. We have not uh, had as many over the past year. Um, that has ebbed off, which is a good thing, but um, if council decides to pass this uh, supportive resolution, um, it by no means takes away the fact that we still abide by the, uh, the right to know law in Pennsylvania, and uh, we're not the only ones in the state uh, uh, that is that uh, possibly could pass this resolution, but it doesn't mean anything about us not abiding by or circumventing, uh, truncating, whatever word you want to use, the the uh, the right to know law. We will still be transparent and abide by the uh, right to know law as we have to. Questions, okay. Council? Yes, I, I have one question. Do we have any? Uh from the other ordinances that have been passed across the Commonwealth, is there any other case law pending that's happened in the past, or has anyone try, uh, you know, tested this? Now these resolutions, as I read them, are all going to get forwarded to Harrisburg so they can add it to the law. <laughs> that is a fact. Okay. So no other challenges or case law? It's there, there was just some case law that came out yesterday from the Commonwealth Court that actually sent, uh, it was actually over volunteer fire companies and whether they're considered local agencies and uh, the Commonwealth Court sent the cases back to the, uh, the trial courts at the county level to get a better record, and then they're going to make a decision on them. That's the only presidential cases that have come down recently uh, regarding the right to know law. Okay. Just like the radar guys, uh, you know, the boroughs are all on that, uh, you know, across the whole state. So this is another one that everybody's pushing. So, you know, on... In the Burroughs Association? Oh, they're, yeah. They're pushing this? Yes. Very good. I'll keep everybody abreast, you know, as I hear more. Very good. Mm -hmm. Any other questions about that one, uh, <clears throat> Council? No, thank you. No. Moving over to our ordinances. We have three <coughs> this evening. Mr. Ratcher. First ordinance is an ordinance of the Municipality of Monroeville repealing ordinance number 2699, which amended ordinance number 848, regulating on-street parking on East Patty Lane. If you recall, a couple of months ago, 
Council passed an ordinance and restricted parking on East Patty Lane. Um, after further review and more citizen input, it was decided that uh, Council should entertain the possibility of repealing that ordinance from a couple of months ago. That's what you'll be voting on on Tuesday, to repeal it or not to repeal it. What do they want to do, Jerry? Any questions, Council? Any comments? Uh, no. I, I, I do have some, but I'll just try to bite my lip and be quiet. Why? It's <laughs> just because I'm a nice fellow. We'll consider this on Tuesday then. <laughs> Mr. Ratcher, next ordinance, please. An ordinance of the municipality of Monroeville regulating vacant and abandoned property which addresses deterioration and blight in the municipality and requires the implementation of registration, maintenance, and security security measures. Excuse me. Mr. Yeah, if you could brief, brief yeah, us on that. We, we've, uh, we've talked about this. This is to uh, get another tool together to fight blighted and vacant properties in particular ones that uh, become foreclosed on and are owned by uh, financial institutions who have an office somewhere, uh, you know, far from here. And um, this, would, this ordinance would require those folks to register, pay a yearly fee, be subject to inspections, comply with all of our ordinances. And as I said, it's just another potential tool to try to fight the problem of blight that occurs when a, a home is abandoned because somebody dies or moves out. Nobody moves in and uh, perhaps the heirs are far away. They don't want the property. And then the next thing you know, it falls into disrepair and you know, you have one bad, uh, bad property on an otherwise uh, pretty nice street. So that's the focus of uh, that particular ordinance. Very good. Any other questions or comments, council? No. I think this is a great, great tool. As Mr. Ratcher said, I know that the, uh, the, the COG the, and the land bank have been recognized recently with their fight against blight and it's something that we need to uh, tackle and this is just one other uh, tool to do that. So uh, hopefully we can, uh, <coughs> we will consider this on Tuesday. May, may, one, one, may I Please, yeah. <coughs> Bob, I, uh, I haven't heard uh, on the um, update on, you know, the ALOM and the Birds Association have been pushing like for the institutions like banks and et cetera that have property but they still ignore it, leave the grass grow and where we're responsible have you heard any more up that, that's Did what this is th this has been passed statewide no no it isn't state oh, I this, think is, I, this is just we're supporting it no no this is local legislation the, we, the municipality will have the authority to carry out those measures. That did get passed in at the state. No, no, there's there's no state legislation right now. Because we're pushing it. We're, yeah, we're, we're no, that, it. as is so often the problem with the state legislation, it takes a long time. We're a common But municipalities have their own power to do this. And quite frankly, most of the municipalities around us have already adopted this I, ordinance. Okay. Yeah. Then that clears it up for yeah. me. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. good. It's a way for us to really to register these properties and to stay ahead of them before they do fall into disrepair. I'm good. And uh, I think it's a good thing for the community. Absolutely. Any other comments, Council? Nope. All right. Uh, ordinance number three, Mr. Ratcher, please. The last ordinance is an ordinance of the municipality of Monroeville approving a grading easement for Sandy Hill Development LLC concerning property owned by the municipality of Monroeville located adjacent to the Maple Crest residential development. Um, this is a development that Council approved one or two meetings ago. I don't recall off the top of my head. It's the, uh, the residential subdivision over by the, uh, um, where the Maple Crest Golf Course was located. In order to properly install the subdivision, the property owner of the subdivision, the current property owner, the developer, needs a grading easement from the municipality on a piece of ground owned by the municipality. Now, just so you know, this is not really very valuable ground in the, in the sense of being able to develop anything on it. This uh, piece of property is fairly big acreage-wise that the municipality owns, and it appears to be a parcel that's left over from the development of Garden City, which occurred back in the 50s. Uh, it is owned by the municipality, and the developer uh, has asked us to provide him with a grazing, grading easement so that it can have the appropriate slope into his development. And if you pass this ordinance, that's what uh, it will uh, affect. Is there anything on this property? Currently? No, it's woods. It's woods. It's steep sloped. It's not. Um, it's not buildable property. And the the fact that it's been not developed since the 1950s. And we don't do property improvement. We don't maintain it in any way right now. Uh no, we don't. No, it's wood. It's wooded. Okay. Yeah, it's. It, it really serves partially as a buffer area more than anything. But if you wanted to develop it, you couldn't. Okay. Um, so it's it uh, just is uh, improvement for us. 
It's just, it's really a courtesy to the developer to um, affect uh, the construction of the development, which is a good thing for the community. What are we going to have? A hundred, hundred new houses. Hundred fifty-three. Yeah, yeah. So this this helps them out a little bit, and it's um, it's property that we have no other use for. We still we will still own it. Yeah. But uh, there he will have an easement. The, the developer will have an easement to grade it in a certain manner. Right. Right. Thank Any you. Any other questions or comments, Council? Very good. That's it for our ordinances. We're going to move over to our reports of municipal staff. Mr. Ratcher. Uh, nothing tonight. I'll, I'll have a few things on uh, uh, Tuesday relative to uh, some uh, recent uh, court decisions uh, okay. in the land use area, but nothing right now. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Little. Yeah, the first item I have is uh, the last couple months in council agreed that uh, ECSNR, a company out of Evans City, Pennsylvania, they have a program which they're also doing with the city of pittsburgh where they will come to your house for hazardous and electronic waste recycling material and it's the same program where some of you may have attended down on our public works facility where you bring hazardous waste paint or electronic you weigh it and you have to pay well in this case they would come to your doorstep and you would do it uh, there's been a delay on this, uh, and the reason for the delay, ECSNR contacted me a couple weeks ago, as a matter of fact, right after last month's meeting, and said the DEP, Department of Environmental Protection, from where they get their permit, they said that if, if people register to put out hazardous and electronic waste to be weighed, then irrespective if the people put the stuff out and you have to weigh it when they put it out even if you don't weigh it you meaning ECSNR the company they own it the DEP said you can't do it by the weighing because certain people may put it out forget about it may not be at home you're gonna come there you want to weigh it and there's nobody to pay you okay so the way ECSNR is going to do this, and this is also with the city of Pittsburgh, they are going to be doing this in the city of Pittsburgh, and as we speak, they're doing it, not literally as we speak, but they've started the process there. They are going to have to get an average of what a household puts out with respect to paint, hazardous waste, and electronics, and it will be a set amount that they will charge. So even this way is actually even better because there's not going to be any weighing occurring when they come out to the sites. So you register, you say you have a TV, it's the average TV, you pay this, they'll come out. And if you put the TV out, they got to take it, it's theirs. The DEP has told them it is yours, okay, if the person puts it out. And the person has to register, though. He has to register either by calling on the phone on a website and we will have a link on our website can I ask a question Sure. what if someone registers that they're gonna put a TV out mm -hmm. and then when the people show up there's a TV and 17 cans of paint and they're not home well they have to pay, well they have to pick it up and they have to prepay for it is the well, point well right I, but if they just said that they're just gonna have a TV but then they decide they're gonna throw all this extra stuff in there well, they have to pay for it, and then what ECSNR is going to do is they will bill them. Uh, they would bill them for yeah. anything mm -hmm. that they had not registered for. Okay, that's what I'm trying to get everyone to understand. Like, you have to tell them exactly what you're putting out. Right. Now, ideally, what, they, <coughs> now, ideally, what yeah. they are going to say, and this is what the DEP is concerned about, what they're going to say, you should have somebody present there when we come. Agreed. But, they, you know, somebody, that's what the DEP But we is all know how fears. things happen. Exactly. That's what they're, they're doing this in the city of Pittsburgh. <coughs> mm -hmm. right. They can't do it until they get kind of an average of a home on what it costs, uh, and then they will begin with us. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, the annual law enforcement torch run will be June 4th through the 6th, and it will run through us on June the 5th. And if anybody does not know what the law enforcement torch run is, this is for, um, I think it's muscular dystrophy, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Um, but they have, there's different police departments all through Allegheny County, and even then some, and they run through each municipality, and they run through Monroeville, and it begins down at PNC Park, and then it ends in Altoona, at least it did last year. And... 
police uh, departments get together, uh, police officers, and even myself, I run in it. And uh, we usually start at the Sheets here on um, Monroeville Boulevard by the, uh, by the Marriott, and it runs up to the Speedway um, before you go up the hill on uh, 22 by Alpine Village. And this is for Special Olympics. Special, um, that's right, I'm sorry, yeah, Special Olympics. Yeah, Olympics. we have an officer, Officer up here, Dave Felice, who's right. very active in this. And he does, he does a, no, no problem. He does a great job Special for Olympics. helping that's organize right. it. Officer so. Dave Felice is the one that handles this. And yep. Kudos for him to, uh, for doing this each year. Um, item number three is uh, I was contacted by a company, uh, uh, CGI, who has an affiliation with the National League of Cities and the uh, U.S. Conference of uh, Mayors. And they do promotional videos free of charge uh, to cities and municipalities across the country. And it is similar to... Uh, we get a, a, a map that's put out every two, three, four years, and there's advertisements around the map yeah. uh, that the, the people that have the advertisements, the businesses, they pay for that, and it doesn't cost us anything. Joe, you want to bring up the... Um, sure. This is an example of what could be done, and this is from uh, Lig Ligonier Township. Turn up the uh, audio, Joe. Don't touch my friend Joe. Don't tell Joe what you're in Ligonier, you'll find plenty of ways to keep yourself entertained. Find yourself a career and start a family. Can't hear it. Rated by many tourism magazines as a top 10 most charming small town in the U.S., Ligonier boasts a lengthy list of things for people to do and see while spending time here. The heart of town has had recent renovations to much loved landmarks, which allows us to retain our small town charm. Ligonier offers a pleasant artistic atmosphere with an abundance of boutiques, shops, museums, theaters, and more for residents of all kinds to enjoy. Also, if you're feeling in the mood to experience big city life, Pittsburgh is only about an hour away. There's just so much to experience here in Ligonier. Okay, I thought this was an opportunity for Monroeville to show its, uh, its good side. And I've given council a, uh, a, a questionnaire, um, and it answers any kind of questions you would have. For instance, would a, uh, an elected official or somebody else that you wanted in the video, would they could be in it? Yes, they could. Um, the production time, usually they come into the municipality for about two weeks uh, and do filming, and the production time totally would be about 12 to 16 weeks. Uh, we have a choice, as I mentioned, who's in the film. Uh, who would be an official representative um, and one of the does your city uh, have a choice of what establishments can participate in the sponsorship yes we do uh, is there a special rate for nonprofit organizations yes there is so there's a uh, several other questions there um, and I have some other material but I don't want to inundate council with this and if, if it's okay with council I, it doesn't cost the municipality anything I'd like you to proceed with it I think absolutely it's great. yeah I, I, they Please. contacted me and like I said they're affiliated with the National League of uh, Cities and uh, I thought it was a good thing and, uh, and this goes on our website and you have a link to it and uh, people can press on it. if somebody is um, moving to the Pittsburgh area, they want to see what different municipalities are like, and they go on our website, and they want to see what Monroeville is like. This is a, a chance to show, uh, show our good side. Not that we have a bad side. Okay? Great idea. All right, uh, let's see what else we have. Okay, in the Turtle Creek Valley COG, I just wanted to mention, they have received the 2019 uh, Governor's Award, and uh, I think everybody received this through email. But I just wanted to let the, the public know about it. It's the um, recipient 2019 Governor's Award for Local Government Excellence. And it was re release, recently announced um, in the Intergovernmental Cooperation category for its work, yes. a multi municipal code enforcement <coughs> program that aims to combat the damaging effects of blight. And as a lot of people may know, they have teamed up with the uh, Still Rivers COG. And uh, we have a blight program in, in, uh, with this COG and the uh, other COGs, the Still City COG also. Uh, and I have one other item um, that is uh, rather important. Um, for next Tuesday, I'm seeking a, uh, a motion from Council 
to uh, advertise a, uh, an ordinance that would put the municipality into an agreement of sale for the property of Bel Air Pole. And we were approached, meaning the municipality, virtually a year ago by the Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission uh, concerning the property where Bel Air Pole is. And the Turnpike Commission has been widening the Turnpike in different areas for the past seven, eight years. Uh, and anybody that has traveled the Turnpike knows it's our, our turn in, uh, on uh, exit 57, they're starting to widen this area. And we were approached uh, about um, us either selling the property to the Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission, uh, but even if we didn't, they could have come in on eminent domain and we could get into a struggle with the Turnpike Commission on eminent domain. But through a series of conversations with the Turnpike Commission and Council, uh, Council has uh, agreed to enter into this, I shouldn't say they've agreed to yet, but I'm asking for an authorization to advertise an ordinance to uh, sell the Bell Air Pool property and, uh, the, uh, and it wouldn't take place until after the swimming pool is closed uh, this year in Labor Day as it does normally. So a closing date wouldn't occur until the latter part of September, October, November of this year. And so I would be seeking a, a, a motion to authorize to advertise an ordinance uh, of such. And anybody have any comment? Uh, council? Questions? No, I don't have any problem with putting it on the agenda. This yes, this motion will be on the agenda for Tuesday for us to then discuss it the following month. Good. Mr. Ratcher, we have to have an ordinance to do this? We do. Uh, Section 501 uh, of the uh, Home Rule Charter dictates the items that uh, require an ordinance, and one of them is the uh, any kind of lease or conveyance of property. So it has to be done by ordinance as opposed to uh, resolution. So that's what we'd be approving Tuesday? Um, you would be approving the act of advertising the ordinance. And then the following month, which would be June, June. Um, you would have the opportunity if you chose to act on the, uh, the actual agreement of sale um, that would be the subject of that ordinance. Okay. And I have one other item. Um, uh, Mike Adams, our public works uh, superintendent, uh, has uh, decided to uh, retire. And uh, I just want to uh, tell Mike that I, and Mike's going to be with us for a while, though, even though he has given us notice that he is going to be retiring. I just want to say that I've enjoyed working with Mike. Uh, you couldn't work with a, a, a better gentleman. And, and a more fair person and a more cooperative individual uh, that's been associated with this municipality for, for decades, literally decades. And I just want to wish Mike all the best in the world, and he's a great guy. Thanks, Mike. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Little. Mr. Hugus, do you have any other uh, comments for this evening? I know you gave your Cabot Road update earlier, but is there anything else you'd like to add? I'm done. <laughs> Ms. Rock, I have anything? Nothing. And a few words. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Gibbs, anything for this evening? Uh, yes, a couple of things. Um, a reminder that Election Day is May 21st, and um, they're doing a food drive. Again, uh, please bring um, non-perishables. Uh, there will be blue cans, and all the food will go to the local food banks. Um, we've had flyers out and about, so it's very important. Let's help each other out. Um, Next is, uh, I'd like to wish my husband a happy birthday. His birthday is tomorrow, and um, he's a great guy. And so happy birthday to him. To and of course he has to be. <laughs> and Nominate most importantly for all of us is happy Mother's Day well, on Sunday to not only my mother, my mother-in-law, but also my daughter-in-law. I'd like to thank them all for everything that they do for myself, my family, um, together. And... I don't think there's any more that could be said for Mr. Adams except for, you know, thank you for everything over the years. And, uh, you know, we will miss him and we wish him all the best in his future endeavors. And um, I think you put it well, Mr. Little. He is a, quite the gentleman. So that's all I have for this evening. Thank you. Mr. Poach. Uh, again, also thanks to Mike. Uh, best of luck. Known Mike for a number of years uh, to do that. I know he's going to 
look forward to getting some retirement time, I hope to. And as well, for Mother's Day, to my mother, uh, who was 90 this month uh, and doing quite well, she's still chairman of the board I can, as well, to do that. And my wife, of course, she's doing a terrific job. She's, her birthday will be coming up soon after that. And also to Mrs. Gaddis, happy Mother's Day, Thank too. You. you get that as well. Uh, yeah, not that I need to be nice. So, uh, okay. Other than that, thank you. That's it right now. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Harvey. <coughs> First, before I forget, I want to <coughs> say happy anniversary to my wife. We were married 37 years yesterday. All right. So, happy Good anniversary, woman. Nancy. Condolences, oh. Nancy. Huh? <laughs> Condolences, <laughs> Nancy. Well, you got to give her credit for putting uh. up with me for 37 years. <laughs> <coughs> I thought I might make a report on Center Road. Uh, I use Center Road every day because I live off that area. The current construction company is performing the worst temporary patch job on a road I've ever seen. And uh, the work is being completed so that the county can next come in and mill the entire road and repave it. I guess that's the good news. Uh, the bad news is it's going to be going on for a while, so please be patient. Uh, you saw the municipal authority put in a new water line. Uh, some of the utility companies put in a new gas line. And now this, I understand, is a new <coughs> sanitary sewer line. And uh, when that's done, the county's going to start, I guess, milling Center Road, if I'm correct, Greg. You are correct, yes. right, Mr. Harvey. So be patient. Uh, you know, it's hopefully it ends up to be a very nice job after it's all over. Uh, the next thing is, I don't know how many of you read the In Monroeville magazine, but this month on uh, page 14, there's an article called A Call to Serve, and uh, it was an article, it is an article about the Monroe Volunteer Fire Department. It is the best informative article I have ever read, and uh, it will educate you on the history of the Monroe Fire Departments, their training, their everyday problems that they face as they continue to provide you and me with this essential service. Their manpower is shrinking, and the calls are increasing. The Minerva Volunteer Fire Departments continue to be the best in the area. I don't think I can say much more that the article doesn't cover, so please, if you get a chance, to read this article. And uh, I will say the municipality supports them tremendously for providing financial support mainly for their vehicles, that the manpower situation is not getting any better, and they are looking for answers. You should remember that the Minerva Volunteers also provide all our EMS service and should not take them for granted because they do it all for free. And that's the end of that report. <clears throat> um, great job. I'm going to really butcher her name, I think. It's Taff or Tafe, Nicole Tafe from the magazine and Deputy Chief Kevin Backo from the Minerva Volunteer Fire Department. Did an excellent job in there uh, providing facts and uh, I think I encourage you all to read it. Like everybody else, congratulations to Mike Adams. Uh, you've just been a uh, stellar person. Uh, it's going to be, uh, you're going to be missed, and I, we'll leave it go at that. Um, any status on the automatic door that we voted on putting in at the front doors for handicapped people? Uh, that's through a, a CDBG grant, and... Um, I don't know where the status of that is, so I'll have to follow back okay. up on that. And last but not least is I, I am told that uh, there was an inspection on the municipal building and we are starting to have mold and on the ceiling tiles and it's all because of our leaky roof. Uh, should we go out to bid and get this roof replaced? Because well, first of all, um, we don't know if we have mold. We have uh, you know spots on tiles as, as most buildings do. Uh, as they go through the years, but I'm in the pro I have not, I've received one bid, uh, not, excuse me, not bid, I've, I've received kind of a ballpark a quote. Um, quote of what it will cost to put a, what's called a torch roof on, and, and I didn't want to mention that this evening until I got the other quote that Mr. Hizzy is getting us for a rubber roof. And I also talked to um, John Float, our HVAC, uh, tech in-house and he's also given me some uh, quotes for each of the units 
up there and, and his belief is not to replace them all at once because he believes that there's still units up there that are that are very serviceable. They may need, may need a belt, a compressor changed here and there, but I wouldn't. He said he wouldn't replace all of them. He might replace you might replace two or three of them at a time. And there was a thought about replacing all of them, of putting a roof down, then putting the units down. He he doesn't believe that that's an issue. Anybody he's talked to that puts down those units, there's no issue with having a, uh, a roof before or after, it's, it's, it's irrelevant. So I didn't want to get in and mention that to council, I wanted to tonight, but I didn't get that other quote, or no, I, I shouldn't say quote, just a ballpark figure of what it would cost for a, uh, a rubber roof. But yeah, I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm glad you did bring that up. Um, I think council has to start thinking we have to most definitely replace the roof here. Uh, because we are we have to quit patching it exactly Please. and that's exactly right and that's my thought too we have to we've been doing a little bit of band-aid work up there the last couple of years and we haven't had the leaks that we've had in the past because of the band-aid but then all of a sudden we start getting getting some and instead of going ahead with the band-aids all the time my recommendation to console is let's get this roof replaced it's money well spent because of exactly what Mr. Harvey's talking about, you don't want to have mold. We have no indication that we do have mold. I probably misspoke, but you, you don't know, want to. I, have we know. had someone come in to check for mold, an outside company? Well, we already have uh, uh, getting some quotes on the duct work and things of that nature. We're, we're already doing that. Now, wait, that, how does the duct work have to, what does that have to do with the mold? I'm talking no, about there's the mold. mold. The mold yeah. travel, that's where it's most likely going to travel, through the duct. Well, I understand that, but if there's mold in here, we have to get rid of the mold first. That's true. So I believe we should, I recommend that we bring in an outside company to test for mold, and if we have it, then we have to take care of it. Okay. Because you've got to replace the roof first. Uh, well, you, you've got to find out if you have mold to get rid of it. got to replace the roof no matter what. So there. What's council's pleasure? Both. Well, mold is dangerous to anybody who walks in this building. But if you don't replace the roof first. Ron, Ron, it has nothing to do with the roof. Just relax about the roof. Let's take care of the uh, mold the, first. The leaks from okay. the roof is what could cause a possibility of a mold. Yeah, but what, if there's mold here, you got to get rid yeah, of it. Yeah, but he didn't say there was. He's having. I understand that, but we got to find out if there is. Okay, but we have. So is it worth is it worth exploring to let see? Me, let me get you let me get you a quote on what yeah. it would cost. Yeah, let me do that. Yeah, but yes, the source of water is what you always have to work on, which uh, is the I however that. testing for mold is certainly going to be cheaper than a new roof at this point. Well, no, 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 the new roof we got to get it anyway. But if there's mold in the building today, <laughs> and it's a dangerous situation for anybody, absolutely, that can and we should determine building. we should determine if that's the case. That's what I'm asking. Does council agree with that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do you have anything else for this evening? Mr. Harvey? No, I'm not good. Day. Okay. <laughs> God forbid. Mother's, 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 Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Mr. Harvey might have one more thing. Mother's Day. Mr. Harvey, do you have one more thing you want to say? I'm good. Okay. I'm Very good. good. He's good. Okay. Mr. Johns. Are we sure? <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask you a couple times, too, to make sure. <laughs> The Runville Convention Center has a few things going on. Tomorrow, Friday, May 10th through the 12th, the Kids Artistic Review will be there. Friday, the 17th through the 18th, Rock and Beer and Wine Festival. Also on the 17th through the 19th, the Mainline Autographs presents the Pittsburgh Area Spring Spectacular XL. I'm not quite sure what that is, but it will be there. <laughs> <laughs> the extra large. Absolutely. There are okay. extra large. Yeah. The, the parade slash fireworks committee has been meeting regularly. Uh, we got things going on. It, it, they're moving along well. Mr. Estock and his staff are getting a lot of responses for the parade entries. Uh, I met with the gentleman from Pyrotech. In fact, I did that earlier today. Uh, our contract that we negotiated two years ago is up this year. So I'm currently working on a uh, three-year deal 
to extend uh, from 2020 through 23. I probably, hopefully, I'll have some answers on that uh, before Tuesday. Other than that, I would like to just say, Michael, I don't have to say much. You know I love you. You're a great guy. Wish you all the best. Good luck with whatever it is you do there, young fella. I'm done. Very good. Mr. Arsenko. All right, a couple of things real quick. Again, uh, as everybody says, Mike, you did a great job. Enjoy your retirement. Um, and I agree with uh, Linda's first response. Please, May 21st, get out there and vote. Don't forget we have the Memorial Day Parade coming up on the 27th. Please support our veterans and get out there and come down to the grave site. They do a very nice program down there. You're usually it's around about 1030 in the morning or so, roughly around there. But please try to get out there and support our nation's veterans. Um, in regards to Center Road and Haymaker, um, I've got good news on both. Uh, Ron did already bring it up. Once uh, the county, or I should say the water authorities subcontractor finishes what they're doing, um, the county is going to mill and pave that, uh, and that'll be done uh, uh, for the way it should be. On Haymaker, I spoke to the county uh, uh, public works director, I should say assistant director, and he assured me Haymaker is on the agenda for this year as well. So. That's probably about all we're going to get out of the county, but those are two good ones. So That's two good ones. Yes. Thank you. I think everybody will be happy with that. Thank Absolutely. you for Thank Haymaker. You. And last but certainly not least, happy Mother's Day to all you moms. Linda, I agree. Happy Mother's Thank Day. Thank you. And to my wife as well. She's been a great mom to my kids, and that's it. Very good. Thank you so much. Mr. Wilson. Hey, uh, Joe, I'm going to hold off on the photographs tonight because I don't have the names with me. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, I'd like to wish uh, my wife and my two daughters a happy Mother's Day. Mike, you know how I feel, and uh, you're the best. Good luck. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. One Seriously. more thing. It is now official as of tomorrow morning, uh, or I should say 12.01 tonight, that Mr. Little's officially a senior citizen at 65 years old. <laughs> Who? And I Mr. Little, same day oh, I, I for, almost yeah. forgot to say it. Uh, yeah. You're an old guy like me. Thing. You so, can join uh, up now. <laughs> yeah, I'll get you the application. Absolutely. <laughs> but Tim, this, is a, this is a tough It's early, but happy <laughs> birthday. Very good. Very I'm good. sorry, I forgot about that, Tim. Yeah, happy <laughs> birthday. Happy <laughs> birthday, Mr. Knows. Little. Um, I want to... Uh, just uh, one thing, I forgot, the Monroeville um, Community Day will be July 27th up at the Community Park, and the Monroeville Jazz Festival is August 17th. Um, Bill Hillgrove and Bob Studebaker will be the MCs, um, and uh, I think we have a, it was a pretty good lineup of, of jazz, uh, jazz people if you're a jazz aficionado, but the Community Day will be um, July 27th, okay? Very good. Anything else? Mr. Wilson, anything else? Thank you. Very good. Uh, we had our uh, Jack Sedlak cleanup day, and, uh, and actually there are a few pictures here. Uh, Joe, if you have a couple pictures. This was a great event. We had a nice turnout. Uh, over, <laughs> over 500 so, volunteers. Of course you do. That's um, cute. We, had, uh, we have there, we have uh, Mr. Poach and his uh, staff there cleaning up. His staff. Over at Heritage Park. <laughs> what? And Ramsey Park. This and is, Ramsey. This is at Ramsey. It was a beautiful day. We had a great turnout for the event. The shirts were great. They were a big hit. Uh, special thanks to everyone involved, the Recreation Department, the Public Works Department, particularly the, the uh, Community Park crew, and uh, with cooking with the picnic afterwards. And uh, certainly, you know, he doesn't do it without, uh, you know, for the... Uh, the praise, but yeah, I Joe Sedlak puts us on every year, and Joe, super job as always, keeping our community clean. That's his brother Jay with his big crew that they had on Old William Penn. Um, and Jay, great job as well for uh, everything you've done uh, for the event. But it's always a big success. We had a nice big picnic afterwards, a lot of prizes, great sponsors. Um, it was just a really, really great event. Um, Joe, it was uh, how many uh, hot dogs we go through about? 400 some. 400 hot dogs. Yeah. Over 500 volunteers. I ate two. Yeah, Mr. Quick. Johns ate two because he worked hard on Northern Pike. We I may have 
I think you ate three. I watched you. <laughs> we even look at that right there, Mr. Johns. Uh, he was burning off those uh, calories so he could eat that hot dog later. So, That's right. Uh, but great job, and thanks for everyone for uh, coming out and helping clean up our community. And once again, Mr. Sedlak, great job as always, and uh, keep up the good work. Uh, speaking of things in our community, uh, we had uh, we have a couple 50th anniversary uh, events. Uh, Elmer's Aquarium, one of our uh, wow. one of our businesses on. William Penn Highway on Business 22. They've been there for 50 years. They celebrated their 50th anniversary uh, last week. Or they had a, they've been celebrating all year, but uh, 50th anniversary. So we're really happy to have them in our community for all these years. They do a great job, and uh, we wish them the best. Mm -hmm. Also, our the mall, Minerva Mall, is celebrating its 50th anniversary. They have a uh, mural unveiling uh, next week next leading up to an event they're having on Saturday, May 18th. It's a family-friendly entertainment. Includes, uh, there's going to be a superhero there, maybe a princess, free That's face cool. painting for the kids, uh, DJ, cookies, all sorts of fun stuff. But this is May 18th, Saturday at our Monroeville Mall. So two uh, big parts of our community, Elmer's Aquarium and the Monroeville Mall, 50th anniversary. Uh, not quite as old as Mr. Little, but uh, they are, uh, they've been around for a while. And uh, while we're talking about that, yes, happy birthday tomorrow, Tim. Great. We uh, look forward to celebrating that. Mike Adams, uh, best wishes, as everyone has said. Uh, very invaluable and, uh, you know, over 40 years here in the community and pretty much has worked every, every department or every uh, part of Public Works all the way up. So uh, definitely a tremendous... Uh, employee for the community for many years and a you know, well-deserved retirement. We certainly wish him the best. And I just want to wish, uh, as everyone else, uh, happy Mother's Day to the moms. Yeah, this is Gatos. Thank you. All the other moms up here. We have any other? Josie, happy Mother's Day. And uh, especially, most importantly, to my wife, who is a wonderful mom. And with that, I will seek a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you Third, and good night. Fourth,